Hi, I'm Michael. I don't know about you, but the 3D printer fumes really get to me. So today I'm going to be designing and printing a simple vent system for my 3D printer room to pull out all those resin fumes. We'll get started right after the main title. If you haven't subscribed yet, do that now. I have a lot of cool projects coming and you don't want to miss any of it. And to be notified when a new video comes out, you have to hit that bell icon. Okay, I have a large three car garage and so we added a wall to create a lab. We also installed three dedicated circuits to power the printer, the heating or cooling system, and whatever else I need back there. Eventually I'll build a workbench or two in here as well, but for now this folding table is working fine. With no ventilation, the fumes just kind of sit there and it gets a little bad. It was always part of the plan to add a vent to pull out the fumes, so we cut a hole through the wall and added this louvered vent on the outside of the house. It has a cage to keep the birds from nesting in here, but I live in the desert and I don't want any other pests crawling in through this vent. I really don't like bugs and I don't want any spiders or scorpions getting in my lab, so I'll have to do something better than this louver to prevent that. For the inside, I had bought this box and this piece to step down the hose size from 4 inches to 3 inches. I'm using a 3 inch dryer hose I got from Lowe's for $10. My plan was to just connect the hose from this box to the printer. But my printer, the Frozen Transform, is pretty large so it has two fans pulling air in and two fans pushing air out. So I needed to make some kind of a junction box so I could pull from both of these fans. And then I decided it would be even better to just replace this box with my own design. Mount it right on the wall, give it two intake tubes, and add a PC fan in there to help draw out the fumes. So that's what we're going to make. Alright, let's get into the design of the vent. I'm pretty new to Fusion 360, so it took me a day to do the design, and I didn't screen record it. I designed it around this two-wire 12-volt fan from Amazon, cheap and fairly quiet, two of them for $15. I'll power it with this 12-volt power supply and this little female connector. This one I got from an old hard drive that I had laying around, but you can get this one on Amazon that includes a free female connector. But right as I was getting ready to print the first piece of it, I figured out my mistake. I totally forgot about the step down adapter. I made the intake tubes four inches instead of three inches, so I have to redesign. Here's the finished design. There's a base plate that goes into the wall, a screen holder. My idea is to glue some screen door screen in here in between the screen holder and the base plate. I made some waffle holes in here to hold the glue, but this will seal up the hole and keep bugs from coming in. Of course, after being glued in, it won't be removable. So to clean out the screen, I'll have to take it apart. With these four holes, I'll screw the back plate into the wall and then the fan just slides in here. I have a little place here for the power adapter to fit. I'll glue this in also. And then the top plate fits on. These four screws hold the front plate to the back plate. The hoses fit over these tubes and hide the screws underneath. Then on the printer side, I designed an intake box which will have magnets in the corners. So let's print it. Okay, so there are a couple of problems. First, the overall scale of the piece is off. This tube doesn't fit in the hole in the wall. Even when it's printed correctly, it'll still be a pretty tight fit. I measured it and the tube's about 2% too large. I made another video about how Frozen gave us the wrong LCD size numbers for the transform for Chitu box, about 1.5 to 2% off, and how to fix it. Check that video out if you haven't already. I also printed this parallel to the build plate this was actually my first large piece that I've printed, and the way I printed it caused two problems. First is that some of the supports that were inside this slot, well, they were too close to the sidewall and they merged with it. So it would take some serious dermal work to clean that up, and I don't want to do that. And next, even though I had supports under here, the edge all the way around has a little fillet that I didn't put in the design. And since this is going to be up against the wall, I want this edge to be squared. 
Okay, let's print it again. This time I'm printing at a 30 degree angle, but it'll take a lot longer to print since it's now three times taller. The size is really good. It should fit in the wall now, and the fan slides in just fine. Okay, the top plate and the screen holders next. Let's print those. Let's see how this fits together. Okay, here we have a problem. This edge of the top plate drooped a lot. I had supports here, but I guess not enough. I'm actually not sure what happened, and I didn't save the Cheeto Box file, so I can't even go back and see what supports I had. So lesson learned there, in the future, I'll keep the Cheeto Box files. Man, this is totally messed up. I just want to design something and print it, and have it come out perfect with no supports, but it is what it is. To do that, I'd have to move up from an $1,800 printer to, I don't know, a $50,000 printer. Okay, I have an idea. I haven't post-cured this part yet, and this edge is still flexible. So I'm thinking if I heat it up under some hot water, hold it in place, take it out into the sun to post-cure, hopefully it'll stick like that, and then I'll be able to salvage this part. Okay, that worked. Now at least this edge lines up right but this lip is still drooping and I'll have to cut that off. I wish I had a belt sander or something to get this edge perfectly straight, but this will have to do. All right, let's see how it fits now. Much better. All right, let's assemble it. But before we do, click that thumbs up icon and turn it blue. This will tell YouTube to suggest this video to other people. Okay, moving on to assembly. Okay, first you'll have to cut off this little adapter that comes on the fan and strip the wires. Then screw the wires into the power adapter. Then just plug it in to test to make sure that the fan runs okay. And make note of which way the air is flowing. When I originally designed the screen holder, I'd made a mistake in Fusion 360. It slides in but doesn't go down into it far enough. The problem is that in Fusion, I didn't realize that the bottom of this was sticking through the inside wall of the fan holder. There's got to be a way in Fusion to detect collisions like this, but I don't know how to do that. If you know how to, please let me know in the comments. So I had to uh, cut off the end of it and then reprint it. The files have this correction. But now there's only one way uh, which this can go in correctly, and that's with the cutoff side in first. Here's an issue with this resin. It's a little brittle. When I tried to slide in a part that was too wide, it put pressure here and snapped this. So it'll be fine. The crack side is against the wall, and when I glue in the screen holder, that'll uh, reinforce it. I bought a big roll of aluminum screen door screen. I cut off a little piece here, and I'm just tracing a portion that I'm going to cut out to glue into the screen holder. Then just cut that piece out. I'm using some five minute epoxy. I've never used this before, and hopefully this will work out. You stir it up for about 30 seconds, and then apply it to the screen holder. When you put it in, you just got to make sure that you get it going in that right direction so that it fits into those holes. And then I clamped it down to dry. While I still had a little wet glue, I decided to glue the wires onto the power connector. And now we wait. Now I mixed up a little bit more glue and glued the power adapter into the box. I'm not sure what to call this thing. It's either the air intake box or the hose adapter. In each of these corners, I left a little reservoir for glue to sit in there. So I just dip the magnet in the glue and then uh, slide it into the piece, snap it off, and kind of squeeze it in there a little bit. Then repeat that for each of the corners on the two boxes. Okay, then I'm just double checking to make sure everything still fits. I decided to use some wood screws for this. It might not be the best thing, but I had uh, done a test with a calibration block that I had laying around. I had drilled a hole in it and then uh, screwed in one of these screws to see if it would split. And it held together. So um, I'm gonna use these screws in here and I really hope the resin doesn't crack. 
Okay, it looks good. Unfortunately, I can't get these to go in any further. I need some shorter screws. Let's get out the cordless and see what happens. All right, I can't get it to go in any further and I don't want to push it. So I think I'm going to stop there. All right, it did pretty good. It just chipped a little bit, but um, it looks like it's going to be fine. One mistake I did make was I didn't make these countersink holes large enough for these screws. And so the screws stick out a little bit and it's a little difficult to fit the fan in there. So for the finished files, I'll make those countersink holes a little larger. All right, that's it. Let's go install it in the wall. So let's find out if this fits in here. This box fits nicely over this fan, and the magnets hold really well. The lab smells a lot better now. I hope you enjoyed this video. All the parts are in the description. And thanks for watching. My next video is gonna be about some of the printing problems I had with this those overhangs, and a detailed explanation of why we have to print at an angle sometimes. I'm sure it will be riveting. Thanks again for watching.